For this video I decided to touch a topic that I've been talking in other videos for quite some time, which is CPU overhead in the GPU drivers, comparing AMD versus Nvidia. And in case you don't know, the CPU overhead can be explained as the amount of work the CPU has to do in the background for things to work properly. As for example, in gaming, even though APIs are getting better, they still rely on CPU draw calls. And this means that technically, the lower the amount of... There's a fly here. The lower the amount of background processing that the CPU has to do, the bigger or the higher will be your final performance as you have way more CPU left for what you really want to do with it. And I'm sure you've heard that Nvidia drivers tend to send more work to the CPU in order to perform as they should, and sometimes you can even see the CPU usage and power draw being higher with Nvidia GPUs, and this is why we say that the Nvidia drivers have a bigger CPU overhead. And I'm pretty sure that you also heard that AMD GPUs work better with older CPUs because they do a lot more processing on the GPU side. But how will they perform when using a current mid-tier CPU? Or any other CPU that isn't really, really low-end? And to test that, I'll be using the RX 7900 XTX from AMD and the RTX 4080 Super from NVIDIA paired with the Ryzen 7 7800X3D, sorry, which is currently the best gaming CPU around, the Ryzen 5 7500F, which is kind of a mid-tier CPU nowadays, as it is comparable after overclocking with the Ryzen 5 7600 non-X and the Ryzen 7 5700X3D, as you can see on this video passing right now on the screen, and the Ryzen 5 5600X, which is one of the most used CPUs nowadays. And this at 1080p and 1440p. And once again, we could be testing older CPUs like the Ryzen 5 2600X, but technology and CPU processing power is moving forward, and I wanted to make this video thinking of a future where the 5600X will be the new 2600X. So after this little explanation, let's see if AMD GPUs are really, really faster with slower CPUs, right after the sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG More! Bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. So, benchmarks. Starting with Assetto Corsa, we have a game that is much more optimized for the NVIDIA side, especially since it still uses the X11, with the RTX 4080 Super being faster in all scenarios, even with a CPU as slow as the 5600X, where the RTX 4080 Super is 12% faster, and with a supposed lesser CPU overhead on the AMD cards, the slower the CPU, the better the AMD cards should perform compared to the NVIDIA ones. But I guess that doesn't apply to the X11 titles and that can be seen at 1440p, where the RTX 4080 Super is 7% faster with a 7800X 3D, 10% faster with a 7500F, and 13% faster with a 5600X. As we move to The Witcher 3, we kind of have a GPU bottleneck even at 1080p, but the RX 7900XTX still performed much better than the RTX 4080 Super, that somehow seems to be kind of CPU bottleneck, as besides the 1% lows that are much lower with the 5600X, the results with the 7800X 3D and 7500F CPUs are basically the same, meaning that due to Nvidia's driver overhead here, the 4080 Super was much more limited compared to the 7900XTX that had higher FPS numbers and much higher 1% lows when running the 5600X. And even increasing the resolution to 1440p here doesn't really change much, with both cards being the bottleneck here, obviously at 1440p, but with the 7900XTX still delivering more frames. Counter-Strike 2 twists things around a little bit, once again, as we're talking about a DX11 title. And in this case, we can see the RTX 4080 Super being 7% faster with a 7800X 3D, 4% faster with the 7500F and 6% faster with the 5600X. But we can also see that the slower the CPU, the bigger the advantage the MD card has in the 1% lows. And as we move to 1440p, the scales get more or less maintained, and once again it seems the lower CPU overhead on the MD drivers applies a bit after all. And the slower the CPU, 
uh, well, the, slow, the slower CPUs, I mean, have higher 1% lows on the AMD side. And that shows even clearer with Banisher's Ghost of New Eden, where at 1080p both cards perform the same with the 7800X 3D, for example, but the 7900XTX has 12% higher 1% lows. And there is much worse with the 7500F that delivers 22% more FPS in the 1% lows with the RX 7900XTX, difference that should be bigger with a 5600X, but actually doesn't. And at 1440p as we get a higher GPU load and overall less FPS, the differences in between both cards disappear with the 7800X 3D, with the mid-tier 7500F still delivering better results with the AMD card. With Fortnite, I don't really have the results for the Ryzen 5 5600X since Fortnite has been constantly getting updated to the point where it's getting ridiculous as the replay file would become obsolete. As for the results, we have the AMD card still delivering higher numbers here at 1080p, being slightly faster on average, but much better in the 1% lows, being 18% faster with the 7800X 3D and 20% faster with the 7500F which indicates a much smoother gameplay on the AMD side. Being only at 1440p, that things get entirely GPU bottlenecked, leading to virtually the same results with both cards. And I thought that since PUBG is a very CPU-dependent title, we were going to see AMD delivering better results here. But since this is also a DX11 title, the RTX 4080 Super still delivers much more FPS in all scenarios, being 16% faster with the 7800X 3D, 18% faster with the 7500F, and 17% faster with the 5600X. But if you look once again at the 1% lows, as you use slower CPUs, the RX 7900XTX delivers better 1% lows, being for example overall slower with a 5600X, but delivering 40% higher 1% lows, meaning that the gameplay on the 7900XTX would be much smoother with that CPU. And 1440p proves my point even further, where in terms of 1% lows, the RTX 4080 Super delivers more with the 7800X 3D, the same with the 7500F, but is way below when using the 5600X, in this case 64% slower, which is an outstanding difference in terms of gameplay smoothness. Now, like in The Witcher 3, these scenarios were tested several times to make sure the results were real and not just outliers or bugs. Every single NVIDIA GPU I tested in this game in this initial scene had terrible 1% lows at 1080p with the RTX 4080 Super being equal to the RX 7900XTX in the averages, but outrageously worse in the 1% lows, meaning the AMD card had silky smooth gameplay here, while the experience with the NVIDIA one was, was kind of stuttery, sorry. Something that gets a bit better on the NVIDIA side as the resolution goes up and the GPU load kind of kicks in a bit more, even beating the AMD card in the averages, but still being behind in the 1% lows, in this case 41% slower with the 7800X 3D and 49% slower with the 7500F, being the difference way smaller with a 5600X, somehow. With Microsoft Flight Simulator, things follow around the same path, with the RX 7900XTX being the faster card here, with the 7500F giving us some odd results where the RTX 4080 Super was slightly faster, even though it delivers much lower 1% lows with the other configurations. Something that, once again oddly, gets fixed at a higher resolution like 1440p, where the RX 7900XTX still dominates in the 1% lows in both high and low end CPUs but oddly being much closer to the RTX 4080 Super when using the 7500F. And Hogwarts Legacy is one of the oddest games I've been testing for the past year, but it surely is CPU demanding in villages like Hogsmeade, where the RX 7900XTX delivers higher average FPS across the board, delivering also higher 1% lows with the 7800X 3D and 7500F, with the 5600X still delivering the oddest results of the bunch, and remember when I told you these game results were odd? 
Well, here at 1440p we have a supposed bigger CPU bottleneck than at 1080p somehow, with the RX 7900 XTX now being much faster with the 7800X3D and 7500F, sorry I'm stuttering as well, in the averages and specially 1% lows. Putting the RTX 4080 Super with higher 1% lows with the 5600X than the other two CPUs, something that makes zero sense. With Dragon's Dogma 2 we're using ray tracing, so I believe it is normal to see both cards more or less on par at 1080p when using stronger CPUs, as we're kind of more GPU bottlenecks. But when using the 5600X, things get more to the point where they should technically be. And these results got retested, as I myself wasn't buying them. But it seems that this game does favor slower CPUs when running AMD GPUs as even at 1440p we're still getting slightly higher results with the RTX 4080 Super when using higher end CPUs since we're using ray tracing but the 5600X just seems to work much better here with the RX 7900 XTX in this case being 28% faster which is a lot in a game like this. Very interesting results here. As for Starfield, the results are much closer than I thought, and I can tell you that in cities like Aquila and New Atlantis, the CPUs get smashed by this game. At 1440p things get more on the GPU side of course, and the results get basically on par in all scenarios, and let me tell you that Starfield might be poorly coded, but it is an excellent game for benchmarking, as the results are very stable and reliable across the board. In The Last of Us, even though the title was ported to the X12, we have the opposite scenario we usually have with these cards, with the RTX 4080 Super now delivering the better results across the board, even with the lower end CPUs and at 1080p, which is odd for the X12 title. Although as we move to 1440p things change massively and now the AMD card only loses with the 5600X, where it delivers much lower 1% lows, somehow, but on the other hand, delivers better overall results with CPUs like the 7800X 3D and 7500F. Getting closer to the final line we have Alan Wake 2, and this game tends to perform much better on the AMD side, at least from all the testing I've been making, this of course if you're not using path tracing. It seems once again that the AMD GPU can push much over the RTX 4080 Super when using the 5600X, somehow. But when using an, AMD, uh, an AM5 CPU, sorry, it actually can, being slightly faster at 1080p, but around the same at 1440p as we enter a complete state of GPU bottleneck. And if you want to see what GPU bottleneck is and why you test CPUs at 1080p, this is why. Because unless you are sure that the GPU isn't holding back the other parts like the CPU, the results will be exactly the same as the ones you see here. The only thing that matters are FPS targets. But that's a topic for another video, I guess. Now we have Spider-Man Remastered, and all I can say is that this game got an update some months ago, where it started running much better on the NVIDIA GPUs, as before they would deliver lower FPS than their AMD counterparts, due to the CPU bottleneck mostly. But now it seems that at 1080p, the RTX 4080 Super still dominates, showing how much more important optimization is over driver's overhead. And as we go to 1440p, things get once again more GPU-sided, meaning that once again, after the optimization patch, the driver's overhead didn't really mean much in this game. Well, at least not in usual scenarios, because as soon as we enable ray tracing and enter in an almost entirely CPU bottleneck scenario, things get different, with the RX 7900 XTX now delivering the same averages but higher 1% lows across the board, as expected from a card with a lower CPU overhead in its drivers, and that doesn't change much at 1440p, where even though we have a way bigger GPU load, because we're using ray tracing as well, the results are more or less inside what we saw before, with even the RTX 4080 Super being much faster in ray tracing. And to finish we have the final results, with percentages for the averages on the left and 1% lows on the right. And as can be seen, in every single scenario we get the RTX 4080 Super being barely faster than the RX 7900 XTX, but still inside the margin of error, we could say that, but with the AMD card delivering much better 1% lows in comparison, with the RTX 4080 Super being usually around or below 90% of the RX 7900 XTX 1% lows. 
And the same happens at 1440p, where there is not a single CPU that delivers higher 1% lows with the RTX 4080 Super. And with these interesting results seen, let's move to the final thoughts. And well guys, uh, well, as you saw, the results are quite intriguing. Well, overall, of course, because according to some videos around the internet, you would say that the difference would be bigger in between AMD and NVIDIA GPUs in terms of CPU overhead. And it actually isn't, apart from some games, because we tested, um, well, we tested a vast array of them with several game engines like Unreal Engine 5, Unreal Engine 4, um, in between others, of course, it's not that I don't remember their names. What I mean is, we tested several games across several game engines, and what we saw is that depending on the engine, like the RE engine, it's, see, I remembered, where some odd scenarios really happen, with the mid-tier CPU and the top-tier CPU, the 4080 Super performs, well, more or less on par with the 7900 XTX still delivering lower 1% lows, but as soon as we go to the 5600X, we actually have way lower performance on the 4080 Super. While in some other titles, even in CPU bottleneck scenarios, the 1% lows are indeed higher with the AMD cards, because once again they have indeed they have indeed lower CPU overhead, but apart from that in terms of averages and so on, uh, yeah, things are more or less the same, even with the Ryzen 5 5600X, which is kind of a mid-low tier CPU nowadays, according to today's standards, of course. So overall, do AMD GPUs work better with slower CPUs? Yes, overall, and I repeat, overall they do. In some games, don't it doesn't really make the difference, but overall they do, not in terms of average FPS, only in some scenarios, but instead in terms of 1% lows, where the smoothness really is. The closer the 1% lows are to the average FPS, the smoother the gameplay will be. That's exactly how it works. And in most scenarios, while the RX 7900 XTX can actually have lower average FPS, or slightly lower average FPS, it has considerably higher 1% lows, which indicates that the gameplay on the AMD card will be smoother overall, being with the 7900X 3D, 7500F, or even the 5600X. Of course, the slower the CPU, the bigger the difference in the 1% lows we see, especially comparing once again the 4080 Super versus the 7900X DX, which is, well, interesting to see, but once again, expected. Or maybe not. Maybe you were expecting something different, like we see in some other videos, where the older CPUs have a huge difference in between an NVIDIA and AMD card, but I guess that's not the case. At least in the games that I tested, with the settings that I tested, I even went to 1080p and 1440p only to see the difference in terms of CPU overhead, because we actually need kind of a CPU bottleneck scenario in order to see the CPU overhead differences, and even then, the differences were what you saw. In terms of average FPS, basically the same, but with the AMD cards, or in this case the AMD card, delivering much higher 1% lows, showing us that overall, yes, once again, the AMD cards work better with slower CPUs, especially smoothness-wise. And well, guys, that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and the fly is still around here. The fly still flying around here. Uh, thank you very much once again for watching. Don't forget to leave your comment. Son of a bitch. Ouch! Leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about the results. Once again, comment on the comment section. I really want to, to see your opinions. And if you had some experiences, uh, for example, with NVIDIA cards actually making your CPU work harder, uh, consuming more power, having higher usage, at least comparing to their AMD counterparts. If you have an old CPU and you actually notice the difference when going to an AMD GPU, just let me know everything in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video as it took a lot of, a lot of big amount of stupid bad work. <laughs> I'm just like saying crap. Um, and yeah, once again, thank you for watching and see you in the next one, guys. Cheers.